I mean God has enough enough for us today enough goodness enough masses he's not always uh, critical of all that we do he's a father who understands us deep inside us and uh, <clears throat> if we choose to allow him in what we do he will be found for us Marco Tila we are continuing with the study of the book of Esther so far we have done chapter 6 uh, we have looked at uh, how Haman planned to exterminate to keep the seed of God. I call them the seed of God because it costed God to bring forth those people that he thinks that he can easily finish from the face of the earth. And that is a lie. He has been deceived to believe that he can kill Israelites. Anybody who has the word of God in their systems, in their hearts, in their mind, are so precious to God. There are so many humans on the face of the earth who do not honor God. Honoring God simply means at least giving attention to God. Uh, we realize that these people should have gone back to Jerusalem or Judah, but they felt because they've already uh, succeeded, they've already lived there 70 years, they've built, the children have gone to school in that place. It's like they've already made that place home. Although originally God's intention was to punish them so that he cleansed them of idolatry. They've been worshipping idols too much. And the truth is, they are remaining in captivity for 70 years as cleansed them. But God wanted them to go home. But the things of this world got hold of them. Caught them and they couldn't. Even if they were weak spiritually in that sense, God still calls them his people. And we see Haman planning to, to kill them and finish all Jews in the whole, in the whole country. It is not possible. I mean, it is not possible. The devil cannot succeed in trying to kill the seed of the righteous in the land. He cannot succeed in that. He cannot succeed. It's like you're trying to kill God. He says, my people are an apple of my eye. You cannot touch them. You cannot touch them. Even today, it is with such zeal that God protects us. Irrespective of how dangerous the environment we are in is. The truth of the matter is this. It is not the environment that we are in that matters. It is God who is with us that matters. What we need to work on so much is how God can be with us because as long as God is with us, there's nothing too dangerous for us. In fact, we are the most dangerous thing that has happened to the place we have happened to. God with us makes us so safe and so secure. Now these people have not been worshipping idols. They refuse to worship idols. The king we are speaking about in this chapter, in this chapter 6 of the book of Esther, this king is a son to Darius. Darius is the man that uh, those that work with Daniel they trapped him by forcing him, by bringing up a law. A law that, uh, uh, that could hinder Daniel from worshipping the living God. When Darius was, uh, was uh, trapped by these people, God is still saved. I mean, God is still saved Daniel from the 
den of lion. Now what we are seeing is the son is now is the one who is king now. And Haman is also still trying to interfere with the seed of God. The seed of the righteous cannot be interfered with. God will look at us as a, an echo of his eye. That's why it doesn't matter what is improvised, what is maliciously done against us. We still remain safe and secure. Even in our environment, uh, where we have reached in chapter number 6 is where Haman uh, was taking Mordecai all over the city and declaring that uh, the man that the king is pleased with, this is what is done for him. Now, after the first banquet that Esther made for Haman and the king, the Bible says that night the king didn't have sleep. And he began thinking about what is in the record of the king. Or in the book of the king. Things that has been recorded. Now the prayers that has been made for three days. Dry fasting and prayer. Caused him not to sleep. Caused him not to sleep. And the king was thinking about what is this? He asked the book to be brought for him. Then he, he asked, he, as he went, we asked, did anybody do anything for Mordecai now that he saved my life when those two wicked men wanted to kill me? And he was told no. And the next thing he thought is, how can I reward this man? That same night, a man went home bragging of his position of his sweat, of all these things. But then he said, but the only one who makes my life miserable is this one man. I have to uh, eliminate you. You cannot eliminate somebody whose God's hand is on him or her. And then the following day, they prepared for him a cross, a gallop, where they will crucify him in the compound of this man called Haman. Now we start in chapter number 6. The king, when Haman went to the king's place, the king was wondering about how to, to, to reward this man who saved his life. And he did to know that Abodekai has a good report with the king. When he arrived there, the king asked him, what can a king do for somebody who he loves. And uh, Haman thinks that he's the one who begin, began telling him that uh, put him a robe on him, take him across the city and say this is what the king does for them that love him. And he was shocked when he learned that the person to be given that is uh, Mordecai. And then the Bible says he went home and spoke to his wife and the very friends with him who was chatting the other day. And they told him, you're not in a position to do anything to this man. If the king is for him, you cannot do anything about him. So you have to look for peace. That's what they told him. Now we are moving from there in chapter number 7. I want us to progress. The Bible says, so the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. On this second occasion, while they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, Tell me what you want, Queen Esther. What is your request? I'll give it to you, even if it is half the kingdom. Verse 3 says, Queen Esther replied, If I have found favor with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my request, I ask that my life and the lives of my people will be spared. Verse 4 said, For my people and I have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter, and annihilate us. If we had merely been sold as slaves, I could remain quiet. For that would be too trivial a matter to warrant disturbing the king. Who 
would you who would do such a thing? King Xerxes demanded. Who will be so presumptuous as to touch you? Esther replied, This wicked Haman is our adversary and our enemy. Haman grew pale with fright before the king and queen. Verse 7 says, Then the king jumped to his feet in a rage and went out into the palace garden. Haman, however, stayed behind to plead for his life with Queen Esther. For he knew that the king intended to kill him. Verse 8. In despair, he fell on the couch where Queen Esther was reclining. Just as the king was returning from the palace garden, the king exclaimed, Will he even assault the queen right here in the palace? Before my very eyes, and as soon as the king spoke, his attendants covered a man's face, signaling his tomb. Number verse 9 says, Then Habona, one of the king's eunuchs, said, Haman has set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall in his own courtyard. He intended to use it to impel Mordecai the man who saved the king from assassination then impel Haman on it the king ordered so they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai and the king's anger subsided wow Madobo Shakata amen this is encouraging now the prayer has had its course I mean the prayer has had its course. Uh, in chapter 4 we studied how terrible they felt. I mean how terrible they felt. Now that they were going to be exterminated, all Jews are going to be killed. Uh, there was a big cry in the whole country. Especially from the Jews. But God intervened. But God intervened. The man who planned to first of all fix Mordecai and later the whole Jews was fixed himself. Himself was fixed by the very evil plan that he planned against Mordecai and the people of God. Aha. When you touch the people who live by honoring the word of God. You are touching God. And you cannot survive. And they know where to cry to. They know where to speak to. This is when you realize that God of heaven and earth is still in charge. Respective of what physical is happening. God can turn everything around. We sing a song and we say, Who has the final say? It is not Haman who has the final say. It is God. I'm saying it is God who has the final say. Even over the problem of this county. God has the final say. Libra Shata. We have been standing before God and praying. This problem will be stopped. Once and for all. I mean once. And for all. The problem of Marsabit County will be stopped once and for all. I mean once in the name of Jesus Christ. God has not called us into this town to continue witnessing the damage that is happening. The loss of life. People's business have come down. We cannot accept this. We cannot. I'm saying I cannot accept this. If God has called me to come to this city to work, one of my assignment is to see this problem come to an end. I repeat, one of my assignment is to stop this problem until it comes to an end. Anyone disturbing the peace of this land, 
Anyone planning evil agenda, I speak to you from this spirit in the name of Jesus. Your agenda will not prevail. We will prevail against your agenda. I repeat, we will prevail. This can be political leaders. I don't know whichever leaders they are that are causing this town not to have peace. We judge you in the name of Jesus, right wherever you are. Yeah, we, we cannot cry always. The means God can use to eliminate you from this city. Even the political leaders who are part of this and are hiding. Or any kind of leaders that are behind this. This town cannot come to stand still because of some few wicked people around. We refuse in the name of Jesus. There is God in heaven that is the creator of this city and the people there. Now we will not accept this in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean we will not accept this. So what we are trying to say is this. If our cry reaches God, something terrible being planned against us, God hears our prayer. I repeat, God hears our prayer. Now, how and plan evil for the people of God. And he prepared a gala. Let me call something like a cross to fix Mordecai there. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Even the tongue that, con that speaks against you, the Bible says, you shall condemn. So, it has happened now. The king, God has had his ways. Over 1.5 billion Jews that were to be killed. Who is it that can lay his hand on the people of God? God was calling the children of Israel. The whole world is my people. But he told the Israelites that you are my children. You are my children. It is always encouraging to remember who you are in the presence of God. It is always good to remember who you are. You are not just any other kind of person if you are born again. You are an echo of God's eyes. Nothing can touch you. Sometimes people talk about insecurity and they fear. And no, no. It doesn't matter how insecure the area is. You are more secure in the battle. It is effective of what has been happening. When you read chapter number 91 of the book of Psalms, the Bible says, A thousand falls at your right hand, and ten thousand at your side, and you shall go through them. Since pestilence cannot find you, every danger that happens in the night or during the day, it cannot come nigh, God says. So we are protected by God. We do not have any evil intention for anybody. But the Kai didn't have any evil intention. He didn't want to worship Haman like God. Because he knows the only one to worship is God. Israel have done nothing against him. The Jews have done nothing. But the guy is malicious, plotting evil. And he cannot succeed. One of the things that we learn here is that Never have any evil intention for him. But if they will have evil intention for you, God knows how to help you. God knows how to remove you from their traps. I am saying God knows. I mean God knows. God knows how to remove you from their traps. Do not plan evil for anybody. Because the same evil you plan, the same trap you fix for somebody is what you find yourself in, as we see here. You don't need to. The Bible says, do not be deceived. In Galatians chapter number 6, verse 7. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he reaps. His aunt did 
saw something evil for the Jews, beginning with Madeka. And he reaped more evil than he did so. That is even the same to me. The intention you have for everybody should be good. Irrespective of how evil and wicked they are. I mean, is our prayer, especially in mass of it, I know a lot of wickedness is happening. Some of us, our loved ones have been killed and you are born again. God will revenge. Not you. God says, vengeance are mine. That is painful. It's so painful, I know. Wicked things have been done. And even before it happens to you, I want you to know if you are a believer and you are in this encounter. And such a thing is happening. Even between your tribe and other tribe. You, and the truth of the matter is a believer does not belong to any tribe of this world. We were born a second time. It is our first birth that made us to be in the very tribe we have been in. But when we got born again the second time, when we got born again the second time, we, we are not of this world. We are not of the tribes of this world. We are of the tribes of heaven, the tribe of the land of Judah. All of us, whatever those tribal boundaries have been are dividing us. And Jesus came and broke those boundaries and just brought all together. So nobody is a Buddhist, nobody is a Gabra, nobody is a Borana, nobody is a Kikuyu, nobody, whoever is born of God. The Bible says now, therefore, if any man be in Christ, not in that tribe, although in this world, if you're in this tribe, you are of, you're not of God. But it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming. So you are no longer from that origin, irrespective of which origin it was. You are now of God. As John says in 1 John chapter number 4, verse 4, little children, he says you are of God. This is chapter number 5, verse 4 of 1 John. Whatsoever is born of God, he says, overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born. So as you are born of God, to overcome this thing that is disturbing this land in a big way. We have capacity in the Yes. And believers have to stay away from this problem. One of the things God spoke to a prophet in December is that believers also are engaged in this wickedness. That's why this problem has taken this long. Our responsibility is to be outside. We don't have to look at anybody as an our enemy. Our enemy is the devil himself. So, as long as our heart is with God and we do not have any kind of hatred in our heart for anybody. Because that's what God wants. You know, anytime you have a difference with somebody, that one will cause you not to have a fellowship with I repeat, any time you have difference with somebody, that will disturb you. That will make you, I mean, you will not have fellowship with God. It is not possible. So it is important, I repeat, it is important that we will not plan anything malicious against anybody. Because that plan will come back to you. And it will interfere with your life. The Bible gives us what God expects us to do for everybody. We have been sent to all the nations of the earth. We have been sent to everybody around us. To take them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody. And we have been asked to preach to people so that they get saved. We have been asked to give good news. That is good intention for the world. God has good intention for the world. And we need to carry the heart of God. Whatever we call. 
we carry this intention good intention I mean good intention for everybody it's only them that carry the word of God in their heart that can also prevail and overcome the evil that is happening in this country even when their so called tribes are part of what is happening your heart has to be so clean before God God has ability to preserve you and keep you out of this yeah I think uh, that is it for today thank you for joining us even those ones who are online, the Lord bless you exceedingly. Our fellowship continues even tomorrow. We go to do chapter number eight. I do not believe your days blessed. You will go in peace. Have all you want to accomplish done for you in Jesus' name. You cannot regret having God to be part of your life. Father, we are thankful for the opportunity to be in your presence this morning. Receive this chance with gratitude because. Whenever you speak to us, Moka te pasa. Lan taraba. Man torobo de moshete kete reklade. Thank you, Lord. For this day, we go out in your name. We succeed in this day. We worship you at lunch hour. We worship you in the evening. Yes, you are the one that we will be looking at. Day in, day out. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let your wisdom prevail upon us now. We walk out. In wisdom. Lord we also. Get engaged in what you have called us to do. I bless your name. Holy Spirit. Thank you even as we. Move out of this place. In Jesus name. You are keeping us safe and secure. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you.